You know, there are some theoretical online people. <laughs> Nothing on ground. Church is practically empty. Zero. 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 Dilapidated buildings. Not equal to a house fellowship center. Making noise. They say my church is empty. Behold the ghosts. Hello family, this is Pastor Gideon. And this is Kingdom Matters. Honestly, I don't know what to think about this video but if the lord jesus was physically present in that building pastor paul nhe would be afraid to say the things he said this boasting is not good this boasting is not good at all and it is not even the same with the boasting of apostle paul that he alluded to and i'm not talking from theory i'm talking from a practitioner's point of view the person to listen to is the person who has the proof of what he's talking about. Not theoretical knowledge. Right? I'm, I'm, not theoretical knowledge. You know, there are some theoretical online people. <laughs> Nothing on ground. Church is practically empty. Zero. 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 Even those listening to them online, they are not helping them. At least they should have ascended the physical church. Theoreticians, I hear what I'm saying here today, and people are staying inside dilapidated buildings that is not equal to a house fellowship center, making noise. Dilapidated buildings, not equal to a house fellowship center, making noise. Paul the apostle once in a while say, I speak as a fool. Let me boast more. Do you remember Paul the apostle? When he began to talk, he said, let me boast small. I speak as a fool, but let me boast small. What is reality? <laughs> hey! We went to Lagos the other day. The Americans and all the guys followed us. Two planes went with us. No dime was dropped. Two private planes. Carried people to go. Do you understand what I'm talking about? These are not things we talk about. You, you just move about in simplicity. And you come to crusade grounds and you, you preach without raising offering. And you must run with speed. So that you don't become history while you are alive. You must run with speed. So that you don't become angry when you are left behind. Bomb is dropping off. Hey! 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 Somebody lift your hands and say, I shall run with speed. I shall run with speed. I shall run with speed. I can't afford the bitterness of the left behind syndrome. left behind while I am running. No be me, do you? If we truly know the heart of the Lord, there are things we may not be able to say under no circumstances. And the worst is to bring it to the pulpit. Just saying it, some of these things, saying them alone is a problem. And then carrying it to the pulpit is another issue. The pulpit is not for such things. See the boasting. It is about speed. So that you don't become history whilst you are alive. It's about the numbers. It is about the private jets. Numbers because it is less than a house fellowship. Private jets. 
modern facilities and structures it is about comparisons you understand it is about those you associate with the americans making history in the eyes of men not being left behind and see this part actually touched me the part where they were laughing was very 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 ugly and very very bad now i don't know how many of you feel about spiritual things but then the reason why i make these videos is because when i see them they affect me like i am touched why would a man of god laugh at another person who is also doing the work of the ministry why under what circumstance and then what is the basis for the laughter they are small you are big they are in dilapidated structures you are in modern structures you are flying private jets they are doing um commercial planes come on now somebody will say what do you know and eh? so what do i know this is the pastor of the largest roofed building as a church in the world in their lineage it is about making it on the global scale it's about the name but is this what ministry is about is this what apostle paul was boasting about let's look at what apostle paul was boasting about his boasting was actually about contending for souls that have been lost it is not about modern facilities it is about his labor for the kingdom how people are being deceived and how he can convince them that listen you have to pay attention to me it is about his suffering for the lord the things he has been through because of the ministry let me read it for you second corinthians chapter 11 it says would to god you could bear with me a little in my folly and indeed bear with me for i am jealous over you with godly jealousy for i have espoused you to one husband that i may present you as a chaste virgin to christ but i fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled eve through his subtlety so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in christ for if he that cometh preached another jesus whom we have not preached or if he receive another spirit which we have not receive or another gospel which you have not accepted you might well bear with him for i suppose i was not a wit behind the very chiefest apostles but though i be rude in speech yet not in knowledge but we have been truly made manifest among you in all things have i committed an offense in abasing myself that ye might be exalted because i have preached to you the gospel of god freely this is what the boasting is about you see, I robbed other churches, taking wages of them to do you service. And when I was present with you and wanted, I was chargeable to no man for that which was lacking to me, brethren, which came from Macedonia, supplied. And in all things, I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you, so I will keep myself. As the truth of Christ is in me, no man shall stop me of this boasting in the regions of Achaia. Wherefore, because I love you not, God knoweth. But what I do, that I will do, that I may cut off occasion from them which desire occasion, that wherein they glory, they may be found even as we. Verse 13 says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as their ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. This is the reason for all the boasting and the things Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians. It is about the people being turned to false ministers of the gospel because they were showing them things. And look at it. 17. That which I speak, I speak it not after the law, but as it were foolishly in the confidence of boasting. Seeing that many glory after the flesh, I will glory also. For you suffer fools gladly, seeing you yourselves are wise. He says in the 20, For ye suffer if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exhort himself, if a man spite you on the face. You allow it when people abuse you. It is the same today, unfortunately. You see, pastors that preach same messages, pastors that do their best to help the congregation, pastors that do not sell things to people, 
the psychology of the people are that you are not powerful. Unfortunately, pastors that are not manipulating people are less regarded. Unfortunately, look at what he continues to say. 21. I speak as concerning reproach as though we had been weak. How be it wherein soever any is bold, I speak foolishly. I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant. In stripes above measure. In prisons more frequent. In deaths often. See his boasting. In labors more abundant. It means he's telling them how he has worked hard. In stripes above measure. In prisons more frequent. In deaths often. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, and once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck, and night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeys of in, in Paris of water, in Paris of robbers, in Paris by my own countrymen, in Paris by the hidden, in Paris in the city, in Paris in the wilderness, in Paris in the sea, in Paris among false brethren. These are the challenges he went through as a minister of the gospel. That is his boasting. That is not the kind of boasting Pastor Paul just did. This is actually the opposite. See, today we have become more materialistic instead of becoming more spiritually centered and ministry centered and focused on the Lord alone. Listen, so you can see that the motivation in many of the things people are doing is so that they can prove a point to others. Never be caught in that web. If not, all that you are doing is going to be in vain when you stand before the Lord. It is a wrong motivation. No matter how hard you work, if the motivation is to use it to spite other ministers of the gospel and ministries or to show off or even to appease your ego. You know, some people think they deserve bigger things because they are, they are, they, they are specially called. If you do business on this motivation, it doesn't have eternal rewards. It is based on a wrong motivation and the lord will not recognize it you must serve the lord out of love for the lord yes that's why he said whatever you do outside of love will be nothing if you prophesy if you do anything outside of love it will help it will not help you it must be based on love and obedience for the lord and i just checked and realized that in the making of this video this is not the first video of this nature that Pastor Paul Enche has made regarding other ministers of the gospel being small and then having not arrived and then trying to say something against people. I see young men today who have not arrived, who have not started, they have already arrived. They speak with authority like they are the owners of the church, the body of Christ, looking for everybody to correct. In fact, to him, you have to get to a certain pedestal before you can speak. And everything he said about riches, private jet, Americans, um, going places, modern facilities, it is exactly the Laodicean model of a church that the Lord Jesus Christ rebuked for, for their pride. Revelation 3.14 says, To the angel of the church in Laodicea write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. 15 says, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. You say, listen, this is the, the problem the Lord has with them. I am rich, I have acquired wealth, and do not need a thing. But you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. Unfortunately, I was trying to see whether Pastor Paul would say, I have taught them doctrine. I have taught them about the Lord Jesus Christ, their justification, their sanctification, their purpose, about eternity. Those are the things you should, you are not supposed to boast, but if you boast, these are the things you are supposed to bring up. Verse 18 says, I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear. So you can cover your shameful nakedness and, and salves to put on your eyes so you can see. Those whom I love, I rebuke and discipline. So be earnest and repent. 
there's a call for repentance here many of us have fallen into this error of doing things to be big in order to spite others to show off or to appease our ego these are wrong motivations for ministry i'm not even happy that dr damina in his attempt to answer and to clear himself from some of these things that are said against him because most of them look like it was being pointed to him claim that he also goes to other places and that um, more opportunities are ahead of him and that they say my church is empty and trying to show that he has members see you don't need to put up a defense for natural things or material things the fathers and all the material prosperity pentecostal pastors teamed up and ganged up against me across africa don't invite damina let him be drained let's see how he will preach that nonsense they shut all their doors and thought i would become broke and poor and i would just be begging and i guess now they are confused. Now they are confused. Because first of all, I don't even need their churches. I don't need anybody's pulpit. I can't even serve this power city enough. True or false? How many campuses can I visit? How many? Even if I'm going to preach in, in the campuses of power city, one day every day of the year, I don't have the time enough. So who okay, cares? Carry your pulpit. Eat your pulpit. They say my church is empty. Behold the ghosts. They say I'm just a social media noise maker. Eh, no wahala. No be social media. Eh, if it's just noise, why are all of you reacting? Since it's noise now, do you react to noise? You are now doing videos. You can hardly preach in your churches without calling Damina. Damina, God punish you. A man of God is preaching. He stopped. Damina, God punish you. <laughs> and they say he's a social media noisemaker. But he has entered their church. They can't preach without calling his name. And they say he's a social media noisemaker. This noise must be qualitative noise. Who cares? Who want your, I don't want your pulpit. Is this not a pulpit? Is this not a pulpit? It's a pulpit. If it's London, I want to go. Pastor Fola, can I come? Sharp, sharp. If it's America, Pastor Jessica was waiting. <laughs> If it's Lagos, Pastor Gospel. Huh? If it's any side of the United Kingdom, Europe, anywhere. What of Ghana? Cameroon? Abuja? Eh? Togo? Abba? Joss? Eh? Canada? Jamaica? Trinidad and Tobago? India? Eh? Cameroon? Brazil, Guagualada, <laughs> Makodi, Dubai, Doha, even Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, in anywhere. All I need to do is just say, Russia, I'm coming. Put the flyer. In fact, for ministry, you don't need to put up a defense. It is not right. So long as you are doing it between you and the Lord, there's no point trying to please men. And even if people think that you are useless, you are not doing anything, it doesn't matter. The most important thing is that you will be great in the eyes of God. Because if you will be great on earth and not be great in the eyes of God, that will be the most pathetic state of a man. I'd rather be a failure in the eyes of men and be great in the eyes of God than have all men praising me, all men at my beck and call, and be nothing or little with God.
Now I learned this from Zach Ponen. In, be in the beginning, it was a bit challenging, but I've come to love the simplicity of pleasing only God. If you watch Zach Ponen's video, it is just him and the background. You don't see any members and you can scroll the internet for hundreds and hundreds of messages you will not see members those of us who follow keenly were, were able to chance on a video where he members were shown but that was on a birthday celebration when he was walking and then it was taken down just to please you and god you don't need to show people what you have people that you are leading in order to feel okay this is the reason why by the grace of god and i will encourage young people I don't post church pictures. You may choose to post it, but then make sure your motivation is not to let people know that you are working hard or you are doing something. I, I feel like if I do them, it will make me feel good about what I am doing. That's why I don't post it. I labor only before the Lord and for the Lord. When we start sharing our church messages regularly, you are going to see how the broadcast is going to be. And very soon it is going to be regular because God is helping us to set up the systems that will help us to shoot it in a better way so that you can benefit by watching. And oh, I've set up a new YouTube channel specially for that so that it will be separated from the apologetics and the polemical videos. So you can just go through it and see what messages we are teaching. It, I'm going to link it in the first comment and in the description. It's called Pastor Gideon boatin teachings you understand so that's why i've changed the name of this one to apologetics and polemics so that one is pastor gideon boatin teachings make sure you subscribe and follow from there you are going to be blessed i want to be dedicated only to the lord and what he wants me to do and then in doing that you will know that it is not about numbers it's not about speed in fact speed in the wrong direction with the lord is going to be one of the most painful disappointment a lot of people are going to have Speed is good only when it is in line with what the Lord wants you to do. Imagine Apostle Paul advancing in killing Christians and never coming to repentance. He would have been a great, great enemy of the church and would have been totally and completely lost. So speed is important, but not more than direction. Now, if we are to go by what Pastor Paul said, I want you to know it is going to lead to a lot of confusion. It is not about number, speed, and how advanced you have become materially. No, it is not. Now, one of the biggest spiritual churches or spiritual stroke, charismatic churches in Ghana is this one, the Philadelphia movement. Their leader says he is the one Christians are expecting. Now, who are we expecting as Christians? Is it not Jesus Christ? So he claims that and he further said that his face is going to be the face of Jesus Christ for the next 500 years. Now, do you think because of the results he has, the numbers, the people follow him, and even his miracles, he's right? Does he have the right to now talk for people to listen because he has the results? In fact, he has one of the biggest charismatic um, YouTube channels. He has, in fact, he has one of the biggest YouTube channels in our country, active YouTube channel. He also has one of the biggest television channels and number of radio stations. So does that mean that he is to be listened to? You are supposed to warn people to stay away from people who claim things that are not in the Bible. He preaches from outside of the Bible. He says Cain killed Abel because of a woman, not because of what is stated in the Bible. He goes against the Bible. Is this somebody we are supposed to listen to because of his results? So what Pastor Paul is saying is neither here nor there. And I feel very, very disappointed that um, it has gotten this far, that ministry is about what you have to show, not what is between you and the Lord, which no man can do unless the Lord. And so you, you have nothing to boast about when you do ministry. And today, a dilapidated building can be used against you. It's unfortunate. God bless you. I'll see you in the next one.